Well, I'm back. I was able to do a few things. I apologize for not filming the, the processes out in the shop. But with this tube, the faux barrel compression tube, I did get a section of telescopic tube, two and three quarters inches long, brazed up in here. Um, I milled a slot in the tube so it would be under spring tension. Uh, I fitted it in here, put it where I needed it to be uh, after you know, fluxing it up and all that. I stuck this in my lathe, turned it on about 150 RPM, heated it up evenly. Uh, once I got it kind of preheated, I stopped the, the two drill holes. One, two, straight up and down. I stopped the lathe. Heated up this section of tube and fed brazing wire in uh, after this was to temperature. I knew it was feeding the wire. I was actively feeding wire in to these holes. Uh, this, the tube that's in here, let's see if you can see a shelf in there. And maybe not. Let's see. But there's a section of tube shelved in there with a slight gap in between it. I knew that the brazing wire was getting full saturation around this. I, I peeked in with the flashlight. And the slot in the insert tube that tel telescopically fits in here, these holes are at the bottom of the gun, which would be concealed by the forend. The slot is at the top of the, the barrel. Uh, when I looked inside, I could see that slot in the, the, the tube wicking the brazing wire through so I knew I was getting full saturation so that part is done uh, with this tube that's probably the one of the more challenging parts of this build making sure that that, that is uh, properly soaking in some of that braze um, additionally here is the abutment washer there's a through hole 7 16 by 14 thread to accommodate the shop tube. I put a press fit little bushing in here. Uh, made out of Delrin. It looks like a uh, looks like a hat or a cowboy hat or a top hat. So this will fit nice and smoothly. Using just that straight bore, 7 16 diameter bore. I think would have caused a lot of uh, compression loss, uh, the transition from this to this. So hence why that little cap is on there. And those two will mate right up. There's an O-ring gland. And the whole purpose of building this instead of brazing or welding this in the tube was so it can be rebuilt much like a conventional daisy that has the abutment washer they, have, they too have a little tube in there with little tabs that fold over the abutment washer and it acts as a shelf that, that the abutment washer rests against so when the piston slams home, it stops. It, this isn't going to go anywhere. Much like the daisies that use the friction, a little electro weld, that's how they hold their tube in place. I've used a solid tube and brazed it in place. So it's a little bit more robust. So when this slides in, uh, let's see, wrong way. This will slide in uh, threads facing muzzle, stop against this tube, and then the shot tube will thread into it. And the reason why this doesn't need soldered or welded is that O-ring. That O-ring produces enough friction in this assembly that once it's slid in place and stopped against that shelf tubing in there, here I just barely stuck it in the tube, it is not going to go anywhere. It requires some effort to slip it in there. You require being lubed up first before really attempting to without tearing the o-ring. So uh, that's not going to go anywhere. So once that's in place, and the lever's cocked and say you have the shot tube out. I have no worries with this you know, falling out down at the compression tube. So that will stay in place, which is 
golden because that makes it to where this is absolutely rebuildable. The seal goes bad, simply replace the O-ring. Um, very, very, very uh, simple approach, really, to a little bit more complex problem with how to keep things contained in a blind area. With that being said, here's the lever. I made up a bushing out of 318 stainless, uh, 13, I think it's 1364 hole. I know it's a little considerably bigger than the factory pivot screw. So the idea behind this is I'm going to use a Chicago style screw or barrel screw, uh, which is what they're often called. Yeah, see it's a little, little bit bigger. It'll be a barrel that goes through, slotted on one end, like a, like a slotted screw, and then a slotted screw on the other that locks against the shelf of the barrel that sticks out on the other end. So that way, this cannot be over-tightened. Once it's tightened down to the machine dimensions, you cannot over-tighten it and put pressure on this to cause galling against the walls of the receiver in this. And the additional thing I'm going to do is machine up three-quarter diameter Delrin spacers that are about five thou thick, you know, paper thin, really, that go between this, they go on the side of this lever and between the receiver, and that would be an anti-galling and reduce friction. So this is the, the raw metal is not rubbing against raw metal. That gives a little bit of a, a self-lubricating uh, washer between the two. Uh, this will be polished, and I've been pricing. You know, you guys heard of the super grade Sheridans. This is my take on a super grade Daisy. And what I may do once I get this all made it up and permanently attached to the receiver portion, I may actually send this off to have it gold plated but with titanium nitride coating. I think that would look pretty slick with uh, new furniture. It'd be something out of the ordinary for certain. Um, that may be a little bit too royal looking, so uh, when I get this done, I'll mock it up in uh, some software and do a nickel finish, see what it looks like, do the gold finish. Um, but I'm really thinking gold or nickel. So that way it can kind of give that prestigious color to something that's going to be a pretty solid design done so that and again that's kind of my take on the the daisy super grade to use a solid tube to make the gun a, a very solid platform they make them shoot them a little harder too so i'm hoping uh with with this here with this setup using o-rings like much like i did with the daisy red rider a number of years ago that this system is going to make the most beneficial use of, of such the small compression volume of air that it actually uses. Uh, I know for certain it's going to shoot well over 400. Uh, with the Daisy I did, I was shooting uh, 460s on the Red Rider, and that's using a piece of brass tube that telescopically fit inside the receiver tube. Uh, required some redesign. But that air gun, um, after I redid it and made it all pretty and you know custom bits and pieces to it. I had given that away on one of the air gun forms in a raffle. To some lucky winner I, I posted a thing picking a number between one and one thousand and got a lot of people real close but I got one guy spot on the <laughs> was thinking, which was kinda cool. Cool for him he's got that red rider now. This I plan on keeping in the family and probably passing it down to my son. Uh, my daughter has a pink rider. She's kind of outgrown it, not really into it anymore. But yeah, there you have it. And I'm feeding you guys little tidbits. This lever will be polished right now, so it's a blasted finish. But I'll polish it up. Uh, go put it through its courses and get it nice and shiny. Um, and so being a nice shiny lever, I figure the main part of the gun should have some type of a accompaniment you know complement to that and I don't know guys I'm kind of leaning toward the uh, titanium nitride gold finish 
I think that looked pretty slick. Uh, it might be a little tacky and too shiny to shoot when it's sunny out, but I think that'd be pretty slick. Tell me what you think. Thank you for your time.